Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook, facebook.com slash radio detectives. In a moment, we're going to get into today's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. The original air date, January 17th, 1960. This one will be called The Evaporated Clue Matter. And in just a moment, we'll get into it right after a word from our sponsor. Before the show starts, I want to let you know about an offer from our sponsor, audible.com. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audible.com slash try now to browse through their amazing and ever-expanding catalog of audiobooks and audio programs. The selection I'm recommending for this month is The Hound of the Baskervilles. This is a classic story that's been told many times, but my favorite adaptation is the Big Finish audio drama starring Nicholas Briggs and Richard Earle. Briggs, who was also the executive producer for Big Finish, wanted to tell a faithful adaptation as he was tired of all of the adaptations which messed with the story. And truly, Big Finish's adaptation is faithful, it's brilliantly acted, and it's a great way to experience the classic story. However, you can choose any audiobook that Audible offers for your free trial. Just go to audible.com slash try now to start your subscription today. Johnny Dollar. Henry Bascom, Johnny at Forest State Insurance Company. Well, hiya, Hank. It's been a long, long time. Yeah, I know. Johnny, are you free to come down here and look into something for us? Henry, as long as somebody pays my expense account, and of course a nice fat fee, I'll go anywhere. Johnny, for once, you're not going to be able to pad that freewheeling expense account of yours. Any bets? Why not? Because the investigation I want you to make is right here in New York City. Oh, well, there's always the fee to fall back on. How much? Usual percentage of the face value of the policy. Okay, only how big is the policy? Johnny, hold your hat. It's about 200... Well, I mean, it's what? just under... 200 bucks? Johnny. Listen, Hank, my cut on a policy as small as that wouldn't buy me a sandwich and a cup of coffee. No, listen. And I suppose you'll question every penny I put on the expense account. Look, you didn't... Why don't me... you just pay it off and save you and me and the company a lot of time, labor, and soap? What kind of a policy is it? Straight life. Huh? But listen, you didn't let me finish. The face value of this policy is a little under $200,000. 200... Oh. Yeah. Well? Hank, my buddy, my bosom pal... For an assignment like that, for the nice commission it's going to pay me, I'd walk to New York. Only maybe you better grab a plane or a train instead. Right. I'll be there. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Four State Insurance Company, New York City office. The following is the account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the evaporated clue matter. Expense account item one, five and a quarter for a taxi out to Bradley Field. Item two, thirteen dollars even for a plane to New York and a limousine to Grand Central Station. Then I walked over to Henry's office at 500 Fifth Avenue at the corner of 42nd Street. Oh, Johnny, you really made time. Sit down. Yeah, thanks. That's because of the tempting offer you made to me over the phone. A policy worth 200 grand. 189,000 to be exact. Straight line. Mm-hmm. On whom? Mr. Jonathan R. Kenworthy. Kenworthy. Very, very wealthy. Retired some years ago after selling off the Kenworthy copper mills. Oh, yeah, sure. Been living here in New York for the past 20 years. Big fancy apartment overlooking the East River. 714 East 52nd Street. Mm, Expensive neighborhood. Oh, I told you he was loaded. So what happened to him? He was murdered, Johnny. Oh? Yeah. And who was the beneficiary of this nice, juicy hunk of insurance? His grandson, Carlton M. Kenworthy. 
And that's the answer to your next question, too. Now, what do you mean by that? I was going to ask you if uh, you or the police have any Any idea who might have killed him. Yeah, that's right. And I told you, this young Carlton Kenworthy, his grandson, who is also the sole heir to all the rest of his estate. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's a pretty strong accusation, Hank. You have any proof? None whatsoever. Nor have the police. But I take it you figure that Carlton had the motive and the opportunity. And a perfect alibi. Oh? Yeah. Then what makes you think he did it? And the police, too? And the police, too. Well? Motive, Johnny. It's as simple as that. All right, keep talking. It's simply that nobody else in the world could possibly benefit by old Mr. Kenworthy's death. Well, now, Hank... Plus the fact that he had no enemies. None whatsoever, Johnny. You sound pretty sure of that. I am. I not only knew him, but I knew a great deal about him. Oh, but after all, a man who's been head of a company as big as Kenworthy Copper Mills... You know, some disgruntled employee with some imaginary grievances. Over 20 years ago? Well... But even if he'd only retired from that business last month, I'd still say no. Kenworthy was one of the best-loved men I've ever heard of. As for his employees, why, they're the ones he left the business to. He never had a strike, any other kind of labor troubles, despite the size of his plant, because he treated every one of his employees like one of his own kids. It sounds pretty unusual, Johnny, I know. But he was an unusual man. Oh, I see. But now about this grandson, Carlton Kenworthy... Well, about as useless a hunk of human being as I've ever seen. How old is he? Oh, 30, 32 or 3. What's he do for a living? Well, that's the point. He doesn't. Nor has he ever done anything. Despite the fine education, all the world travel his grandfather lavished, Johnny. Johnny, if you want a perfect definition of a playboy, I can give it to you in three words. Carlton Manson Kenworth. And he gets the whole estate, as well as the insurance. He's known in every nightclub on Manhattan Island. He and that leech, Alan, something or other, who pals around with him. Alan? Yeah, um, Barker or Baxter or something. Theaters, nightclubs, expensive restaurants, all the racetracks when they're open, wherever they're open. And they toss money around like confetti. Where does Carlton get it? From his grandfather. He was always sponging off. What about this pal of his, this uh, Alan, whatever his name is? Uh, Barker. That's his name, Alan Barker. Well? He sponges off Carlton. Oh, they're quite a pair, Johnny. Well, did the grandfather approve of this kind of stuff? I don't think he really knew what was going on. According to the old man's attorney, who is a friend of mine, uh, he was led to believe that Carlton was investing in various business ventures. Hmm. The point is, the boy needed money. And the surest way of getting it, plenty of it, was by having his grandfather dead. Yeah, well, you've built up quite a case, Hank, but it still isn't enough to hang him, not by a long shot. Have the police been able to pin anything on him? Not yet, apparently. I told you he has a perfect alibi. When did it happen? Last Tuesday. Uh, who's handling the police investigation? Uh, Lieutenant uh, Randolph Singer. At the Randy agency. Singer? Great. Randy just happens to be one of the best homicide men in this fair city of yours. Well, he certainly hasn't impressed hey, listen, me. If they've got him working on it, and if you have got a case against Carlton Kenworthy... Hank, I'll see you later. Where are you going, Johnny? Over to see Randy Singer. Sure, Johnny, I'm just as sure as your friend Hank at the insurance company. Why, Randy? Well, the way that boy played around. Cost him a fortune. Even more than his grandfather gave him. You're sure of that? What do you mean? Well, the way I get it, Grandpa gave him plenty. Yeah, but Carlton is up to his ears in debt. Every time the boys raid a plush gambling joint, there he is. He and that... Hanger on of his, Alan Barker. Like peas in a pod, those two. Hmm. Then he probably welcomed the raids. Hmm? Sure. Probably kept him from having to pay off some of his losses. Yeah, he's still in up to his ears. And as long as he's the only one who could possibly benefit from Grandpappy's death, as long as we're sure that nobody else had any reason for killing him, and we are... How and when and where was he killed? Tuesday night in his apartment. He was struck on the back of the head with a heavy wrought iron poker from the fireplace. One good wallop, and he was done for. Mm. Hank says that Carlton has an alibi. Yeah, airtight. I checked it every way I can. Uh, from here, that is. And where's your case against him? But if you can break that alibi... But Randy, if you've checked it I out... I said from here. But if that company of yours will pay your expenses to Alaska... Alaska? That's right. Oh, look, with such flimsy evidence... Will you do it, Johnny? But now listen, Just Randy. Just to, let's say, to get me off the hook... But I'm still not convinced that... Johnny. (sighs) Okay, Randy, sure. (laughs) 
Act Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Meet star Stuart Irwin. Nothing's worse for an actor than a nasty cold. To feel better quickly, I take wonderful four-way cold tablets, a fast way to relieve cold distress. Right. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Take my advice. For your next cold, take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Four-way, only 29 cents. And now here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff's gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, Act Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Evaporated Clue Matter. But why Alaska? Because that's where Carlton Kenworthy says he was when his grandpappy was murdered. Well, Randy, that ought to be easy enough to check out. So I did, Johnny. He made the airline reservation. He was aboard the plane. He got the Juno on Monday afternoon. He got himself a room at the Baranoff Hotel. You checked that with the hotel? By telephone. Why was he up there? Who knows? But the hotel says he was. Well, what did he do with himself? Apparently took in some of the night spots and flew on back here on Thursday morning. Checked him all the way through. And his grandfather died on Tuesday. Oh, Parker... Here's the report on that poker, Lieutenant. Oh, good. The prints were pretty badly smudged, but they managed to nail down a couple of them. Oh? Whose? Yeah, look at this, Johnny. Yes, sir. One print from the deceased and... and a couple made by Carlton Kenworthy. Yes, sir. And uh, why not, Lieutenant? Huh? Kenworthy... After all, as I told you several times, I've often made up the fire for my grandfather there in his apartment. So is there any reason why my fingerprints shouldn't be on that poker that was used to kill him? Hmm? He's got a point there, Randy. Well, listen. Of course I The have. fact remains... And didn't this officer say the prints of both myself and my grandfather were badly smudged? Yes. Sir. So, whoever did it wiped off his own prints and part of ours. Quite possible, Randy. The fact remains, Kenworthy. The Ken fact Worthy. remains that I was in Alaska when my grandfather was murdered. Why, Carlton? Just a little trip, a little fun, just... Who are you? Johnny Dollar, investigator for the insurance company. Well, Dollar, I certainly hope you can accomplish more than these stupid police have. Listen of all the stumbling, me. bumbling... Well, that, that, that's all, Parker. Yes, sir. Well, Lieutenant, that uh, silly look on your face... Because I think you killed him. Because you're the only one with any reason But I didn't, to. of course. How could I? Hey, tell me this, Carlton. I'll tell you anything I can, Mr. Dollar, if you'll get this incompetent flatfoot off my neck. And worthy. And, of course, help to solve the murder of my poor, sweet... Kind old grandfather. Okay, okay. Did you make that trip to Alaska alone? Yes, that's right. Okay, thanks. That's all? That's all. For now. Very well. And uh, will you keep me advised, Lieutenant, if by some stroke of luck you should happen to make some progress for a change? Get out, Kenworthy. Gladly. Just be sure you stay around, that you don't leave town. Don't be silly, Lieutenant. Why should I? Johnny, so help me if that guy... If I have to... Okay, okay. Just give me one thing, Randy. An address. Huh? Yeah. I could see why Randy'd harbor no love for Carlton Kenworthy. His attitude there at headquarters got into my skin, too. Expense account item three, a dollar even for a cab to Alan Barker's apartment. And I saw immediately why Randy had said they were like two peas in a pod despite the fact Carlton was a good deal huskier. They were so much alike, I wondered if there was some blood relationship. Hardly, Mr. Dollar. We're simply good friends, that's all. Our tastes are alike in liquor and women. We like to do the same things, and... Well, that's why we get along so well together, why we're known as the uh, inseparables. Alan, did you know that Carlton was going to Alaska? I certainly did. I drove him to his plane on Monday, and on Thursday I met his return flight and drove him back to his flat. Missed him like the very devil, incidentally. You keep a car here in the city? Mm, in the garage down in the basement. What did you do while he was away? Felt terribly at loose ends. But then I had my car washed and greased and took a long trip. Oh, when? 
I left Monday evening. Where'd you go? Oh, I drove several hundred miles. Took little side roads and byways that probably aren't even on the map. Think perhaps you could retrace your route? <laughs> Good heavens, no. Oh, I did end up somewhere near Albany before starting back Wednesday morning. Uh-huh. Did you stay in Albany? My memory's a bit vague, Mr. Dollar, but I'm quite sure I didn't. Well, where did you stay over? <laughs> well, this may sound fantastic to you. Where? But I haven't the least idea. I uh, took a couple of bottles with me. And they, coupled with the fact I was in completely unfamiliar country, and that at night one little roadside motel looked as good as any other, well, I just don't know. You know, you make things sound pretty bad for yourself, Alan. I beg your pardon? Considering the way you've been sponging off Carlton Kenworthy, well, offhand, I'd say you had as much reason to want his grandfather out of the way as he did. I beg your pardon. And without pardon. a very good explanation of your whereabouts at the time of the murder. Now, you? look here, Dollar. But you know something? I don't think you have enough guts to have made those lily white hands of yours wield that poker. A horrid thought. And yet, on the other hand. Well, yes, Dollar? Hmm. As an accessory. Accessory? That's right. I'll see you later, Alan. Now, look here. Just don't leave town. Carlton? Possibly. Alan? Well, I don't know. I, I don't pretend to be an expert judge of character. But I'd swear that Alan wasn't capable of killing a man. And yet, as Randy had said, unless we could somehow break Carlton's alibi... And then I got an idea. It would take time. It would be expensive. But with 189000 of insurance involved, yeah, I decided to take a flyer. Stick my neck out all the way. We'll return to yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in exactly one minute. Constipation is something people don't talk about much. But it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs... It's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, X-Lax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolated X-Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is X-Lax in your medicine cabinet? And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account item four, four hundred and eighty-nine fifty-four. That's a round trip plane ticket to Juneau, Alaska, by way of Seattle, Washington. It wasn't until we got there that I suddenly realized I'd been pretty stupid. In spite of the fact that Alan looked very much like him, I should have taken along a picture of Carlton Kenworthy. And certainly I should have taken along a set of his fingerprints for comparison with any I might be able to pick up. Or even a sample of his handwriting. But I didn't, so I'd have to work things out the best I could. Item five, ten dollars for miscellaneous taxi fares. Item six, ten dollars for a room at the Baranoff Hotel. And yes, I got the same story Randy Singer had about Carlton's having been there, having spent plenty of time at the bar in the bubble room at nightclubs all over the town. But then it was item seven, eight dollars and a half for some drinks and dinner in the main dining room that finally did the trick. Yeah, that pointed out the one small, seemingly insignificant way in which I could either prove or disprove Kenworthy's alibi. Believe me. Seldom has the solution of a murder case hung on such a slender thread. Anyhow, less than 36 hours after I'd left New York, I was back at Idlewild Airport. Item 8, 10 cents for a phone call to Randy Singer. Item 9, 750 for a fast taxi into 18th Precinct Headquarters. Johnny, where you been anyway? Did you get in touch with Carlton? He's right here in my office. Good boy, Randy. Well, hello, Carlton. Ungodly hour to drag a man out of bed and over here. Yeah, have a bad night of it? Well, we, uh, Al and I did do the town a bit. Uh, have you found some lead, I believe you call it, on the killer of my grandfather? Yeah, maybe. Do you mind if I sit down? Maybe you'd better. Where were you when your grandfather was murdered? Why, well, I've told you, Juneau, Alaska. You know Alaska pretty well? I know nothing about it. This is my first trip and a very brief one. You stayed at the Burnoff Hotel. That's right. A check with him and you'll find I was there on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Mm. Did you eat there at the hotel? My dinners, yes. 
Uh, but I fail to see what that Just uh, answer my questions, would you please? <sighs> Why not? Okay, now. Monday night. Cocktails in the bubble room? That's right. But what difference could that possibly And, uh, make? what did you have for dinner? Now, that's a stupid question. Yeah? But if I can prove you weren't where you say you were when your grandfather was killed... If you can, Dollar, and I know that you can't, but if you could, I would gladly confess to this murder, regale you with gruesome details, tell you anything you like. Wise guy. I asked you what you had for dinner Monday night there at the Baranoff. Oh, I see. You think if I say I had something that wasn't on the menu that Just night... Just answer my question. Or you? perhaps you'll check to see if the dinner was put on my bill, so I'd have to sign for it, leave a sample of my handwriting. But I paid cash for everything. I asked about your dinner. Well? Dollar of all the asinine, idiotic... <laughs> Shrimp cocktail, a salad, a steak, and some coffee. Get that stuff anywhere. But now, Dollar... Like? What? The coffee... Really, if this is detective work, if this nonsensical questioning... Well? No, Mr. Dollar. I had my coffee with cream and sugar. Oh, you ordered cream? I used the cream that was on the table. Look here now, of all the silly, absurd, childish things... Cream was on the table? Of course it was. Real cream? Yes, yes, and and the sugar was real sugar. Oh, that's beside the point. But what you hope to gain by all this stupid... Uh... Oh. Oh, you mean you solved this heinous crime without knowing about the sugar, little boy? That's right. Because you'd already told me you were never there. What? Because Alan went up there instead, didn't he? Using your name to establish an alibi for you. Now, what miraculous deduction leads you to... Because of your certainty about that cream on the table. Of course I'm certain. Doesn't any decent restaurant put cream on the table? No, not up there. What? What's that, Johnny? But he didn't tell me that. I, I mean, don't know I don't... why, Randy. Maybe no big dairy farms yet. Maybe just plain habit. Maybe they like it better. Dollar, how did you find out but about But on that? every table, even in the best places, you'll find no cream. But a little can of evaporated milk. Like to check on it? Well, I'll be doggone. It was Alan. Did Alan tell you that? Did Alan give me away because he thought he could get the money if I... I, I, I knew he was my friend only because of the money I could give him, but listen... He's as guilty as I am, Mr. Dollar. Is he? Of course he is, because he helped me kill my grandfather. Well, isn't he? Isn't he? I'll, I'll prove it. I'll, I'll, I'll prove I couldn't have killed him without his help. Do you hear me, Dollar? Do you hear me? You think that's going to help you in court? Believe me, if I were to put down all I think about the Allen Barkers and Carlton Kenworthys and all the rest of that rotten... Ah, why bother? What's the use? Expense account total, including incidentals, the trip back to Hartford, $574 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star with a word or two about next week's program. And a welcome to a couple of more stations that have joined us. WBRK in Pittsfield, Massachusetts... And WKNY over in Kingston, New York. We're glad to have you with us. And man, how this network grows and grows. As for next week, well, I wonder just how you'd feel sitting on top of a nuclear explosive device knowing the darn thing may go off any second and blow you to kingdom come. I know how I feel. And I'll tell you all about it on my program next Sunday, as usual, right here on the CBS radio station that brings you all the best in programming. The story's a real cliffhanger, and I'm sure you'll like it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Harry Bartell, Herb Vigrant, Carlton G. Young, Herb Ellis, and Jack Edwards. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Suspense follows on the CBS Radio Network. Better buys are your reward. Red Orange Motors for a Ford. Get 
get your orange guaranteed from the largest dealer in Albany. In the heart of Auto Road, orange is the place to go. Orange Motors has the parts that's true, plus 44 years of experience to Orange Motors. If you're white, for better service, better fight. It's easy to have a new Ford Falcon in your garage. Orange Motors has an excellent choice of Falcons in all colors, automatic or standard shift, two doors or four door. For a nominal down payment, you can own a Ford Falcon for as low as $50 a month. Think of it, a new Ford Falcon for only $50 a month. Want one? Come to Orange Motors in Albany. Better Ford buys used or new at 799 Central Avenue. Orange Motors, if you're wise, for better service, better buy. Radio 59, WROW, first on the dial in Albany, Troy, and Schenectady. Hi, this is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site, where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. So much for a small expense account. Uh, certainly a uh, unique clue to wrap the case up and does show how far Johnny will go to solve a case. Uh, I did like this. Uh, it was an inverted mystery, like on Columbo, except we didn't have the solution in advance. And the murderer did a great job just being incredibly smug and self-satisfied, which makes it all the more uh, satisfying when he is taken down a peg. Also, I'm glad that we do have uh, some of the local commercials in, the, in here. These are the real local ads, and very rare, as opposed to pl things that were played all over the country. Well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback with some comments on uh, Facebook. Uh, comment uh, regarding the haunted ham matter. Uh, uh, Stephen uh, says, never bring a sword to a gunfight. Um, and Brian asked a question. Uh, how many concussions did Johnny Dollar experience in the radio, uh, in the episodes of the radio show? Uh, it's a very good question. And the answer is that we don't uh, know. You could kind of compile from all the episodes out there, but even in uh, John Abbott's Who is uh, Johnny Dollar Matter, when he lays out all the times that Johnny was shot, he doesn't even attempt to count all the times he was hit over the head. And certainly not every time he was hit over the head did he act like he had a concussive uh, symptom. In addition to that, there are a lot of episodes of Johnny Dollar that are messy. Now, while we have scripts for most of the programs that were done in... Uh, Los Angeles, there's the entire New York run, which uh, will start late in 1960 and go into 1962. And if a program was lost there, there aren't any scripts. The Hollywood programs, uh, you can find most of the scripts if you go into the Thousand Oaks Public Library. But there's no such facility in New York City. So we have a bunch of episodes where we don't know what happened. You could have gotten two or three concussions. So it's a good question. I wish I had a better answer for you. But thanks so much for listening. All right. Well, that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Dragnet. And next Friday, another episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. In the meanwhile, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And become one of our friends on Facebook.